Are, are we good? Are we rolling here? Um, I got this lapel mic on. That's the one, yeah. Gotta get the Tacoma footage, guys. <laughs> All right, we're gonna put this thing on. <laughs> All right, let's get started because I only got a half an hour, so I want to give you guys as much as possible. So, obviously, this is the Luminaris RP200 from Tacoma White Tooth Transit Printer. And we have an MT1501, our beast, here, ready to embroider on. So, what we're going to be doing is we're going to do a mixed media class. A lot of designs, when we're garment decorating, we do one for the other. You know, you put designs on shirts or your embroidered designs on shirts. A lot of times that get boring, right? So what you want to do with your different machines and your different things that you have in your work uh, in your workspace is you want to try to like create something new, create something more fun, create something exciting for your customers, right? So you can get some more money, right? So start mixing stuff together. Think of what things you can mix together. You can mix, uh, you know, your embroidery in this case with your white foam transparent. That's what we're going to be doing today. If you have a DTG printer, you can DTG along with white toner. Many different ways you can mix and match the different, you know, you can set up a vinyl, you got a vinyl cutter right here, the comb vinyl cutter, as you guys see, and you can put it on, on top of that. So you can mix media together to create a more attractive, more attractive design and do fun things like, you know, have some, some puffy vinyl and stuff, all types of stuff. So you have the RP200 right here. And I have a file set up for you guys. And I actually have the design over here. We're gonna pass it around in just a moment. But uh, what I want you guys to see right here, we're gonna get some samples to pass around the room, is with the RP200, there's like, it's a two-step process where the printer prints onto a transfer film. And when you put the transfer film into the, into the printer, you wanna put it shiny side down. There's two sides, there's a matte side, and there's gloss inside. I'm going to pass, pass this around so you guys can examine it. Because I like to explain things in a way that people understand it so that you can feel confident if it's a machine that you're ready to purchase, right? So, and by the way, if you guys are interested at any point, we have some Wacoma salespeople back there who can talk to you guys about finance and things like that. But, okay, so as those sheets pass around, you can feel the shiny side and you can feel the matte side. So you want to insert it into the machine with the shiny side facing down, all right? And what you want to do is, you have a stack like this, you kind of want to like separate all the different sheets to make sure they don't stick together while they're printing. So you just run your fingers through them really fast. Doesn't have to be too much to get you guys to see. Put them into your machine right here. Put my camera, you guys will see. All right? Put them into the machine right here, and then you just close up the machine, and we're ready to go, right? So, let's wake up our computer here. All right, we got, why is that on the screen? And where's the password? Anybody have more passwords? <laughs> <laughs> password, Nicole? <laughs> that would be too, too easy. It's a good thing I put this on the transfer already. <laughs> the password is password. Just give us a second, sorry. Okay, all right, no problem. Somebody be in here in this moment with the password. But um, I printed out some already, and I did a two-step transfer process. I'm not going to pass them around yet, but I'll pass them around shortly so you guys can feel what they feel like once you've created a transfer. But I also have some pre-printed transfers already that I've printed out. And I'll pass them around momentarily. Where are my transfer films? Are, is everybody feeling the shiny side versus the matte side? Yeah. It's obvious, right? You can see one side is shiny and one side has a matte finish. Shiny side goes down. Okay, so now we have our design. If we can get it on the screen. Before it was on the screen. Okay, so I can't show you guys the screen of the software. But the software is really, really quite simple once you get it dialed in and it prints out exactly. I'm just going to print out one of my uh, designs here. Um, I wanted to go over and show you guys how you would import a design, but it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so I'm just going to press print right now and we were hooked up via USB. 
Well, we were in front of Berkey. Just somebody come over and hunt it. Okay, so we're hooked up via USB, so it's going to take a little while for Luminaris to activate when you start printing. You guys see us receiving information, the blue light starts to flash, and. Okay, so let's give it a moment to print out. So once it prints out, you're going to get a transfer film that looks like this. Okay, shiny side down, which means it prints on the matte side. You guys can pass that around. Pass that around. Just make sure you get the transfer back, please. Pass that around. So you guys can see exactly what it looks like once it's printed out. All right. Warm it up. In the meantime, your heat press is heating up. So what you want to do with your heat press is you want to heat up both sides of the platinum. So you want to set your heat press to 300 degrees for 300 seconds. Actually, mine is set to 310 degrees, so you know, a little, little variance there. But for 300 seconds. And this machine right here, this heat press, the thing I like about it is the digital gauge at the top. The digital gauge at the top makes it so easy for doing something like white tone transfer printing. Because white tone transfer printing, um, you need to heat up the heat press at a certain degree, and then when you press at, at, for a certain amount of seconds, and then when you press to do the AB transfer, you also need to change the time on that. And this machine makes it really fast and really efficient to change times. Um, so, if you guys can get a shot of the heat press right here. Um, 300 degrees right here. I can switch to 200 degrees really, really fast, really simple. If I need to, right? Back at 300. Really, really fast, really, really simple. And for white tone transfer printing, you want to do go, go 310 degrees to uh, to warm up the platen for 300 seconds. Like I said, my platen's already warmed up pretty much, so I'm just gonna go ahead and let it warm up some more. And then after you've done that, you want to get your beat paper to do AB transfer. <coughs> let me show you guys what beat paper is. I'll pass it on to you guys so you guys can take a look at it. I have a open pack already. Came up here and stole this one. Right. This is, I feel like I'm at home. Everything's all jumbled up. <laughs> it's a mess. I feel right at home. This is all my stuff. In my workspace. Okay, so this is the uh, transfer paper that you use to, during the AD process. You can see the one side when you're using this is paper that comes with the OERs. And you see one side has grid on it. And the other side is just white. And this has an adhesive glue on it. So if you guys pass that around so everybody can see. The goal of this class is to not only show you guys the design, but show you guys the process, because the process is the most important part. If you can do it, if you're confident enough to, 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 in your ability to know how to operate the machine, the that's side. half of the battle right there. So now, the I printed out I showed so much my transfer, just like spin around so right now I'm gonna marry the two. So I'm gonna place my this is my A paper, this is my B paper. The matte side goes on the all white side right here. So I'm gonna place it on top. And it's real easy, it's real imperative because this gets pressed together. So it's imperative that you just take a little corner right here and you just make a little make a little crease right here to give yourself something to hold on to after that press pops up. Alright, so that's something good. Right so my heat press is pretty much, it was warmed up already. I think it's warm enough. So you guys at home, if you're just getting started, you're gonna do 300 degrees, 300 seconds, and wait the whole time. But my platen is pretty much warm, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it up so you guys can get the show on the road, keep going. All right, so now I'm going to put down a piece of paper to protect my platen, because this glue can sometimes get uh, stuck to your platen, so you want to protect the heat press, protect your press at all time. So you're going to lay this down in here, inside the heat press, we're going to slide out right here, slide off your key, right? I'm going to put another piece of paper on top because this glue, this little small part right here, you don't want to get that stuck in the black. So I'm going to put a piece on top to protect it, and slide it in. And this part right here is for 120 seconds. That's fair. So I'm going to change it from 300 degrees to 120 degrees. 120 seconds rather. All right, so now this is a marry process. So I'm gonna marry the two sides together. And this part right here is the part that everybody talks about. There's a learning curve in peeling your A to B paper. So you have to peel it low and slow and at an even rate. And it can be little challenges. 
But what's going to be helpful for you guys is if you have some oven mitts or some, you know, if you don't have any oven mitts, just get some piece of cloth like this, and it's going to help your fingers not to get a little hot. Yeah. Right? So you're going to let that go to full, full um, time, whatever. And a lot of people um, in white toner transfer printing, a lot of information that you see online um, is that you get a papery feel. And that's why some people are discouraged from white toner transfer printing. And it does have a certain type of feel and a type of texture that some people might not like, but in my opinion, it's still a valid way of making shirts. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here, guys. I'm saying that because I did the research at home myself. And some of you guys might follow me on YouTube. I made that production on YouTube. If you want, if you like, comment, subscribe, please. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, don't don't skip the ads. Don't skip the ads. Uh, so, so I uh, <laughs> so I uh, I did a test myself when I first got mine, and I you know started getting into white tone transfer because I want to see what all hype is about, see the good and the bad. And I actually made some shirts, and I did wash tests with the shirts. And right now, my shirts are still fine. So it is a good, valid way of, of making shirts. And they have certain features in the software where you can knock out, where you can put holes in your design so that so that you get less of white paper, uh, less of paper refill, right? And you can put how how large you want the holes to be, and it can create kind of like a distressed look. Or you can do it solid, like this design right here. We're doing solid. Just I just printed it out, didn't put any holes in it. Or anything like that. So it's a wind down, nine, eight. I'm really good at talking to you guys about the time. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, two, one. Auto open, key, right? Turn it and slide that out. And now what we're going to do is we're going to rub. We're going to rub the top. We're going to keep the flat on there. We're going to keep the paper on there. And we're going to rub the top a little bit, just so we can make sure the glue is adhered to our design, right? So I'm just rubbing it on there a little bit, but you want to peel it while it's hot. That's where this comes on. So you grab one edge right here, and you just start peeling low and slow, like this. I got it a little and slow. I want you guys to see it, but oh, there we go. Okay. I see why y'all did that, okay? It took away my screen, so I can't see it after. Okay, you guys know what he's doing on the computer, so I'm just gonna film his hands. That's cool. Alright, and when you get to the end, slow down a little bit more, just so. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, true story, guys. I was trying to do for you guys. Got here, wasn't working out so well, but. Obviously, my skills went up when you guys uh, came in the room, so. Yeah, so, um. Over here we have what you call a perfect A to B transfer. So you guys, if you guys paid attention to what I did right there, and you guys are able to replicate it, then you guys will have the same success like I did making this transfer, okay? And there is a learning curve to it, but to be honest with you, when I did it my first time, I did pretty good. On the edge kind of right here, it might, you know, peel, might get a little bit, like if you guys pass around the transfer that I sent around. Did I, oh, I didn't send it around yet. Okay, so, these are what you're going to get. You see, from the first transfer that you got versus this transfer right here, now we have some glue on the back of our sheet. Right? We have some glue on the back of it. So now you have a full transfer. How are we going on? 15 minutes left. Perfect. Okay, look at that. <clears throat> this is like making a YouTube video, but live. So um, now I'm going to separate my two. Right now, my two. You got to do another shot. Nobody cut scissors like it though. The eyes so the eyes so Sorry, it's so like that. It's a very important scissors. Your scissors technique is very important. Alright, so now what happens with the with the glue sometimes on the edges is the glue can get right on the edge of that um, paper right there. So what you want to do is kind of like trim away some of that those edges just in case you have some glue on there because that will come up, come off on your shirt, so just trim off a little bit of those edges just to make sure, because sometimes you can't see it with your eyes, but it's on there. So it's always better to be safe than replacing your client's garment. All right, every dollar counts. I'm gonna try, try to keep a clean workspace. <laughs> All right, clean workspace. All right, so now we have a transfer. We're ready to transfer this onto a shirt. All right, so we grab the shirt real fast. I'm going to kind of fast forward a little bit. 
as I realized I'm going a little slow here. I'm still, I forgot the embroidery part. I forgot the embroidery part, right? Hmm. So, okay, so we got a shirt right here. And we're using a Bella Canvas shirt. Bella Canvas. <laughs> good quality shirt. All right, so I'm going to pre-press my shirt. I don't know if you have to or not, but it's always a good idea to pre-press your shirt to get the wrinkles out. You know, get the moisture out, so I'm going to pre-press it. A lot of people load their plaids like this, load their shirts like this, like that. For some reason, I like to load it this way. I don't know, just, I'm just weird like that. Let's do my stuff unorthodox. All right, so I'm just going to pre-press it for a few seconds. And with the Rokoma press, you just press it down. And when you're ready to put the release, you just grab the handle at the bottom and grab the handle at the top. And just give it a gentle, hard tug. And it releases just like that. That's simple, guys. And a trick for you guys, if you have problems finding the center of your garment, which you guys can do is you can fold your shirt in half. You guys probably saw me do that before. Fold it exactly in half, right down the center. Make sure that the edges match, right? And then you can just press a line going down the center. Sometimes you want to make your shirt perfect. If you have some time and you don't have 150,000 shirts to print, okay, sorry, flashbacks. <laughs> right. So just press it down the center. Right. Press a little, little line going to the center right there. And now you got the center point. Now we can go ahead and press this down. Now when you press this one, typically, um, what are some methods that you guys are used to, to uh, pressing on your shirt? You guys are used to pressing vinyl, right? Vinyl, has everybody here done vinyl? Raise your hand if you've done vinyl before. Yeah, very around people. What do you got, what the rest of you guys do? Huh? <laughs> 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 you just did it. You're going to spectate. You're going to learn today. <laughs> All right, so what I did right now is I lined my letters up, and I did put a little crease in the top. I'm doing mine textbook way. Normally I would do this on the video and just press it. Sometimes I just crack it over a little bit. So you guys have to do it the right way. Alright, but that is something. So now I can take this crease right here that I created and I can line it up with this crease. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. Alright, so right now I'm gonna hang my collar off with the platen just a little bit. I'm gonna take my four fingers right here and I'm gonna put it right in the center on my crease. I can't just increase it a little bit. But you guys do that? Oh, sorry. Um, all right, so got it centered right here. So now I'm just going to go ahead and press my design right here. And just as a precaution, it's not necessary. I'm just going to put some Teflon on here because I'm doing it. And I don't want to embarrass myself and mess up in front of you guys. Oh, yeah, and this is a 30 second press. Okay, so this is my remote press. Boom, three, zero, ready to go. Typical heat presses, you got to press the button. You're waiting for the time to go down. You guys are talking about it. Alright, so press that down. Talk about it. Any questions so far? No. Okay, come on. Here we go. What do you do uh, for, about press marks? Press marks. For press marks, you want to lighten up your pressure because that's better. You, you probably observed that I have a few press marks on my shirt. So you want to lighten up your pressure so you can avoid the press marks. Thank you. Right so yeah, I have the pressure high because when you're doing the A B process, you want to make sure that glue is adhered. But sometimes that can put marks on your shirt. Okay, so now this for white toner transfer printing is a cold peel. So you want to remove your print from here and you want to kind of oh my gosh, you got a fast work, guys. All right, so let this cool off. And while we're letting this cool off, I'm going to go ahead and set up my design over here. Okay. So let me get my loop. Sorry, guys. And we have two pieces of stabilizer over here. Now this is our uh, my 13 by what is this? 8 by 13. Take this off. And by this time our heat should be dissipated. And I also have some spray adhesive. I highly recommend using um, spray adhesive if you're using a nice quality shirt, like a like a um, Bella Canvas shirt. So now that I have cool this off, it's cool to touch. I can go ahead and I can peel it off. You guys, so, just peel. Right. Peel this off. Mm -hmm. Just grab a corner. And go ahead and peel it off. And right now you have like a shiny type of look on the shirt. Oh, it's not that 
pale. That's the nice shiny. So you can press it one more time to get rid of that shiny, that shiny stuff. Press it one more time for a few seconds. Will it fade with washing? No. I've done wash tests on this, and I don't know exactly what they predict, what they estimate, but I've washed my shirt for like at least 20 times in the wash since I made it, and it hasn't faded yet. So the inks last pretty long. But this, go ahead. There's a local stretch with the shirt. Okay, we got a stretch, stretch, stretch test left over here. The stretch test that you guys see online, to me, makes no sense. Nobody's, like, you see people online, sh nobody does that. Do you, do you go home and stretch your shirts like that? No. Okay. So, so <laughs> you go home and you might stretch your shirt by putting it on like this. So, yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's good to go. This is a stretch test because logically, a shirt goes around the body and nobody's abusing a shirt like that. So the stress test to me is just doesn't make sense. It, it lasts. It's good. It's good. Okay. It's a little stretch. Yeah. So you might have stretch like that. So, all right. So that's just my personal. Sorry. But it does stretch pretty good. And I'm going to pass it around if I made it so you can stretch it up all you want. Matter of fact, if you want to take it home with you, you stretch it even more. All right, so I'm going to press this a little bit for a little bit. There's <laughs> some types of jokes, huh? I'm not doing it on purpose, I'll say that. So why white color print versus another? Cost, um, what you're doing, what you want to do. So with white color transfer printing, is you're not only limited to garments. Okay, you know what, I press this too long. Then, uh, I, I Let it cool down. Uh, Let's okay. We got to do another shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so let me pass this shirt around so you guys can see exactly <laughs> what we're supposed to get. Because <laughs> I can do with this. So, that ain't backup, man. You got no backup. Backup plan. Alright. Alright. So, ain't nothing to you guys. Guess what? Guess what? You do it all, you know? <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Another one. Oh man, you know what I mean? Keep it moving. It happens, you know, to the best of us. Alright. Are these 100% cotton? These are 100% cotton shirts, yes. Okay. And the reason why that happened, guys, is because one, I pressed it for too long, and I was trying to get rid of Matt Field, but with that Matt Field, you actually need a Teflon sheet and not and not bush paper. And I'm using bush paper right now, and I don't have any Teflon sheet, so I apologize for that. So maybe with this one, we'll just keep the uh, shiny, the shiny thing, and you know, we'll, uh, you can just feel how it looks with the one that I'm passing now. Right, so I have all this right here. I'm sorry. Is there a question? Okay. Cool. along with my spray adhesive. 
And the reason why I recommend you guys use adhesive spray is because it makes it so that the stabilizer absolutely keeps that shirt stable, okay? What so, type of stabilizer do you use? For? This is spray adhesive Fast at 87. No, the, the stabilizer? Oh, this is cutaway stabilizer. Cutaway. Okay. Always use cutaway stabilizer on, on items that you can wear, right? Because the point of stabilizer is keeping the garment stable, not only while it's embroidering, but after it's already created. So if, you, if, you're, if you're using cutaway stabilizer, uh, tearaway stabilizer, and as you put it in a, in a wash, your garment is going to, uh, your design is going to kind of distort a little bit because it's going through the wash and the threads are moving. But if you use cut, um, cutaway stabilizer, it's going to stay there. It's going to be permanent, become part of the garment. So it's going to keep that design in place. Right. That makes sense to everybody? Yeah. In, in cases when you, when you do like both, uh, like when you use the embroidery and the, and the heat press and the, and the luminaries, which you said, do you always use that one first? Like, or it depends on the design or what is that? It depends on the design. You could, you could in theory, um, embroider first, but I don't. Um, it's better. It depends on what your design is and how much you're trying to do. So, like right now, I have this as a reference, so I can, you know, mark and aim my wood machine where I want to do the delivery at. So right now, I'm gonna flip my shirt inside out so I can put my spray adhesive on. All right. We're running out of time, but I'm gonna get this on the wood machine. All right. So there's down here. This is not something to use half an hour, but it's okay. We got it. Inside the garment. Get this part first. All right, you want to make sure you put the right side, correct side. And what I do with my mighty hoops, well, when I'm hooping anything, I roll my shirt up a little bit. So you figure out what works and what doesn't work. So go to the fabric store, get different pieces of material. You got one or two different needles, and you play around and see what it works best on each on each uh, piece of material. That's what I like. Thank you. 
All right, so you gotta get in there, you gotta push those buttons, you gotta turn those knobs. And the most important thing I would say about embroidery is learning what to do when something happens. What to do when you're break break, what to do when you're new break, what's causing those issues, right? If something is pulling, then something is gonna be complex. So the thread is gonna break, the thread is thread, right? It's not strong, right? So if something pulls the thread too hard, it's gonna break. So the thread breaks. What's pulling? What's pulling my thread, right? If the needle break, what pulled my needle? Or what did my needle hit, hit against? How do I avoid my needle from hitting that thing that caused cut, cut my needle to break? Most of the times, it's the errors that we're making. You know, as you guys saw, I make plenty of errors, right? And I've been doing this for a few years now. But you know, when you're spotting little things that fly, it's like a live YouTube video. You know, still make errors because you're trying to, you know, be perfect possible. You know, I'm trying to multitask right here, trying to find things in my head. It's still difficult. But um, when you're at home, you're only setting, take your time, learn your machine, and then you become fluent in it and you're confident enough to, you know, take on clients. And the key is you have to play with your machine before you just get in there and start taking clients. You're not going to get this and be ready to go. Set it up. Okay, ready. I got a order for 20 shirts. No. <laughs> you haven't spent time with your machine yet. So get your machine, learn your machine, learn the do's and don'ts. Learn how to twist the knobs, learn what it does, prepare yourself, get the different comments, order some stuff for yourself, your kids, your friends, your family, then when you're confident enough, then you take the first time. And I hope that helps. Alright, so our show is always done. We're going 900 system minutes, crank it up to 1000 system minutes, or 1501, guys. Oh, 110, put it on the edge. Go back down to 1000 system minutes, or 110. Alright, so uh, any more questions? You definitely need to put your stabilizer, but what are you using? Like, put the stabilizer in, in the garment, like, on the perimeter, or is it okay to kind of have it, like, floating inside of it? Well, if you're embroidering something on the machine, if you're using spray adhesive, you can float, but with all the problems you have, I, mean, I recommend um, hooping the stabilizer with the, uh, with the thing. But it's going to come with practice. Yeah. Practice different methods. There's so many different variables, and unless I had your design, I couldn't really give you a solid answer. There's no one size fits all, but you have to get in there and play, play around with it, right? Like for a Gilded G500, I might not use spray adhesive, right? I might just put it, put it on there with the stabilizer and not use the spray adhesive. But because I'm using a nice, soft, fine quality shirt like the Bella Gamma shirt, then uh, you, know, you want to use some spray adhesive. To keep it stable. The thinner, the thinner your garment is, the more stable you want to try to keep your garment. I'm looking for some scissors right here so I can cut the back off. So now I flip my shirt inside out. Temporary spray adhesive, you just pull on it a little bit. Up to the design, trim away the access. And you can use, I forgot what it's called. Somebody help me out here in the audience. The, uh, the, Baby, iron on, feasible, what, 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 what do you call that stuff? Tender touch. Tender touch, there you got it. You got some pros out here in the audience, man. Right? Tender touch, you can use some tender touch to give it a nice, soft feel so that when you uh, put your garment on, it's not rough, right? And typically, I don't use tender touch unless I'm wanting to deliver a quality product to, to a client or, or if it's young children, right? Young infants and stuff like that. You want to make sure that it's not rubbing against the skin. So, I'm going to finish product here. I'm going to pass it around. Of course, we didn't do that last press because we don't have any uh, of that top stuff, whatever you call it. Can't escape on my memory right now, but here we go. Teflon, that's what it is. All right. Question, one more question. I think we're out of time. With this spray adhesive right here, I don't get it, but I bought Gorilla Spray Adhesive, and the name, the launch title, is probably aggressive. Yeah. aggressive. But, um, <laughs> Alan, bring it over here. I don't know what I mean. Alan, make sure you guys can talk with me. My videos on YouTube, I didn't mind on some of this, so I can do it, you can do it. And if you guys are interested in any of this equipment right here, our B200 60 by 20 press, until 1501, we got some sales associates that'll be here throughout the whole event. Tell them to eat that you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.